All right, everybody, this is Ross, the fig boss. In today's video, we're gonna talk about a really special fig here called Sister Madeline's Yellow. And this is a fig that was found, if you wanna know the history of it, I believe it was found in Michigan at a church. And it was um, found by Charlie Little in Michigan who found this, this fruit and the I guess the caretaker of three different varieties. There's a Sister Madeline's Green, there's a Sister Madeline's Yellow, and a Sister Madeline's Dark. But Sister Madeline, I guess, was the one who was taking care of these particular varieties. And Charlie, again, stumbled upon the trees at the church, asked around, started talking to Sister Madeline, and then got some cuttings and really spread the cuttings throughout the fig communities. And a lot of the um, sister, at least the Sister Madeline fig that you might hear the most about is actually the, the green. And I actually grew that a couple years ago. It's very similar to a green Aishia, an Adriatic type fig. But this one here never really got a ton of attention and um, I understand why. But a friend of mine, Maddie, actually, um, in Long Island, had been growing this fig for a few years, gave his tree to someone named Karen, who was also kind of a local person in New York, and she started growing the fig. And I was at a fig gathering in Princeton where she was also at, and she brought a fruit from that particular tree. And she then let us all try it. We cut it in quarters, I think, and we had it, and it was honestly one of the better tasting figs I had. And I was shocked. I was like, my mind was blown. I was like, why is it that this fig is so good yet we've never really heard much about it or the reputation of it is almost zero. There is no reputation. So I had to get myself some cuttings and I did. And um, so far I'm really pleased with what I'm seeing here on this tree. Um, now I do want to say before I go any further that this particular fruit is very similar to like a white triana and you guys know that white triana is one of my favorites I almost tripped there guys and you can kind of tell by the outside it's got this green yellow exterior also kind of like canadria and then the insides are really like jelly really thick depends on the the uh the variety of course but I've noticed over the years now of collecting fig varieties and growing different varieties that this is a very similar style of fig to other, to many other varieties. So Sister Madeline's Green Greek, or yellow, I'm sorry, is very similar to like something like uh, White Triana, Canadria, Laterola, Lynnhurst White, <clears throat> Atriano, Unknown Mitica is actually another one that I'm trialing because I've been such a big fan of White Triana, and I know how amazing that fig is, and I know how underrated it is, it really doesn't get enough credit at all, to be honest with you, that I decided to grow different types that I thought would have some um, potential. And of course, even already tasting this fruit two years ago in Princeton, I was very impressed. So I thought, wow, this is a great start. Um, why not grow this one? And then also, why not try to grow Unknown Mitica, which is um, a pretty popular fig uh, that Big Bill really likes that was introduced by a guy named Art, and he really likes it too. Um, and he's in Pennsylvania, I believe, as well. So these are pretty decent figs for like this area of the world, this area of the United States. And just in general, I would argue that a lot of these fruits um, if they're similar indeed to white Triana, like I think they are, and definitely this fruit certainly is, then they would sh certainly do a, a really well in a wide variety of climates. Um, you know, I, I really liked this one that Karen had let me taste in Princeton, and I was really pleased to see that it had a good shape to it. And it also was kind of drying on the trees. She, she had brought a fruit that was really well ripened. I mean, it was like almost dried. Um, and it held up to the conditions. And that's kind of what these fruits do. Canadria, White Triana, 
on Noemitica, if you can get them to ripen for a long time, they're gonna really show their true colors and they're gonna probably dry. I mean, that's, um, if I'm not mistaken, Canadria, in its breeding, I think Calamerna was used in its breeding, if I'm not mistaken. So a lot of these fruits, I believe, personally, my hunch is that a lot of them have good drying capabilities. When they kind of look like this, obviously I don't know for sure. We still have to test that theory. I don't know how long it's gonna take. I don't know how good the drying capabilities are, right? Is it like, um, you know, is it like a Calamerna that will dry on the tree, but it'll take 20 to 30 days? Or is it like, you know, a Verdino del Nord or a Neruchilla de Elba that takes only maybe six or seven? You know, so there's a pretty big difference there in terms of its capabilities. And so far I'm seeing it's, it's definitely um, towards, not towards the Verdino del Nord, not towards the Neruchilla de Elba. So the other things to consider with this in terms of how this compares to White Triana is the shape. And as I said, you know, White Triana unfortunately has a little bit more of a flatter shape than I would like. And because it's a little bit flat, it does tend to split maybe a little bit more than let's say this fruit, or at least that's the potential, right? So I'll show you guys the shape now. The fruit I'm holding in my hand and I harvested today is quite flat. It is of the shape that I don't want, but the rest of the fruits on here have got a really good shape. This, even this fruit right here, kind of to me, looks a lot like um, Moscatel Bronco or even a, um, uh, <clears throat> a Corinth actually. So in the shape and even in the stem length and even the appearance of the fruit, if I had to know any better, I would actually say this is probably a honey fig um, by looking at it. So it has a good shape. It's not exactly a like Dotado because Dotado is typically quite flat. So it's got a longer shape to it. And the fruits, what I was very pleased to see, the other thing that separates these fruits from each other, like Canadria and Unknown Mitica and White Chirana, they're all different, of course, even though they look similar. They're of a similar style, right? But this, uh, this one here has got quite red on the inside, which is very impressive. It doesn't always happen like that. These types typically can either stay quite amber or they can get pink or they can get red like this. And the redder it is typically, the better the berry flavor is. So I'm, I'm quite excited to try this particular fruit. And then of course, we have to think about the texture of the fruit. So those are my main concerns really. I mean, I haven't been concerned too much with when it ripens, the production of it, the hardiness of it. I've been mainly concerned and really most of my concerns usually are about rain resistance, split resistance, the shape of the fruits, the hang time of the fruits, the drying capabilities of the fruits. And then of course, when we talk about the, you know, the eating experience is about the flavor and the texture. How is that gonna differ from white Triana and, all, and unknown Mitica and even the other fruits I've ripened in the past that are of a similar type like this? So let's try it. This is a really good looking fruit. It's the first one off of this tree. Actually, I had some last year, uh, but they didn't ripen that well because it's, it was such a young tree. Let's try this. Huh. So very sweet. Very, very sweet. Ridiculously sweet. There's a ton of honey in this. Wow, that's really good. Um, this is a fantastic piece of fruit. I'll tell you what, I just did a video, maybe you guys saw it or maybe you will see it. I just did a video on this um, Paradiso from Bode and how I was talking about how amazing that, that fig is in terms of flavor. This is just as good, if not better. That's a very good piece of fruit, guys. So the difference, though, I would say between that and the Paradiso is that this particular fruit is just not as like um, 
densely thick. It's like a thicker pulp, but it's, um, um, how do I describe this? It's more loose to it. It's got a really thick honey and a very thick jam that kind of blends together and forms this nice, thick, amazing fig. I mean, actually, it's really good. I think it's so underrated, these types of fruits. Like, uh, even Canadria is underrated. White Triana, this one here. I mean, I think they just don't get enough credit. Probably A. Triano as well. They just produce this awesome pulp that's very different than other fruits. It's not dry. It doesn't have a, you know, a bad taste to it. The only thing you want to concern yourself with is picking it at the right time. And of course, we got to touch the neck. That's really where the money's at. But the longer that this, these figs, these types ripen, I find the better they end up being. And they develop those berry flavors. That one had a decent berry flavor to it. Extremely sweet. And then you get that thickness to it. But if you picked it early, it's just like any other fruit. It's not really that impressive. And um, you, know, you really won't understand, I guess, the amazingness of this particular variety. Um, in terms of, I guess, production and all that, you know, the characteristics of the tree, I wouldn't say it's that productive just yet. Um, for some reason, a lot of the fruits, a lot of the leaves didn't produce a fruit. And it took the tree a while to actually to produce a fruit. Uh, the fruit buds didn't form right away. I don't know why that is. So I have probably a, you know, let's see, on this branch, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven leaves right there without any fruits on it. There's another like five or six, another five, another four leaves, five leaves. So I, I could have had probably like another at least another 20 fruits on this tree that would have ripened way early. Like today is September 15th, uh, and that's the first fruit off of this tree this year. But I would argue if it formed fruits way earlier, those fruit buds had formed on those first leaves of the season, um, you know, this thing is probably ripening roughly even a month earlier, uh, at least two weeks earlier. So I would argue that this fruit is probably mid-season don't know for sure. The vigor is good. Um, I would argue it's probably just as vigor, just as a slightly above average in vigor. Don't know the cold hardiness. Can't speak too much else on the uh, characteristics here, but the productivity so far is a bit low because the light requirements maybe are a bit high. The shape of the fruit's good. The fruits are good. I'm excited. I'm gonna keep ripening these as time goes on this season. And uh, hopefully we can get a nice dry period where I can eat, maybe even get one of these here to pretty much dry on the tree or close to it and have that really awesome experience like a super well ripened white Triana that does compete with, um, with the Col de Dom and is probably like a 4.7 or a 4.8 out of, out of 5, you know, something crazy like that. The fruit I just ate was probably like a 4.6. Maybe even a 4.7 out of 5. I mean, that was a really, really good piece of fruit. So I'm impressed. That's Sister Myline's Green Greek, and I'll just show you real quick the, uh, the tree again. It's not bad. We'll see you guys soon, all right? Take care. Hit that subscribe button and check out our blog, figboss.com, and check out the other videos we've done now on the fig tastings this year. We'll see you guys soon. Have a good one.